Hey everyone, Erin from The Impatient Gardener here and welcome to my half-melted garden. Um, I'm here in Zone 5, southeastern Wisconsin. So this is that time of year when there are like these tantalizing little tastes of spring uh, and yet we know there's more winter coming. So uh, this is kind of where it's at and I'm not really able to do anything in the garden yet. It's still too early and a little too messy. I could do things like uh, pruning hydrangeas or something like that but in most places I have to walk through snow to do it. So if I just have a little bit of patience I might be able to do that job without getting wet feet. But I did think it was a good time to talk about some of the plants I'm planning on growing this year that are a little bit interesting. Obviously, this is not a comprehensive list of that, but these are things that are a little bit different or unique for me or something I'm excited to try, along with some things that I'm not going to be growing this year. So I'm going to start with the things that I am going to grow, and at the top of that list are more fruit trees. Um, now, I have several fruit trees here. I have an Asian pear, two espalier pears, and an apple. I guess that's not really several, it's a few. Um, I'm going to add a couple more apples into the mix. In fact, I'm going to try columnar apples again this year. I tried one of these once before. I put it in kind of funky place in the garden. It didn't really do well. I didn't really like where it was. It didn't end well. I'm going to do those in containers this year. So we'll see how that goes. I have two different varieties. Um, I don't know where I'm going to put those containers yet, but that's um, on the agenda. I have, I have not had super productive fruit trees. So I'd really like to get my production up a little bit. The espalier apple that I have in the vegetable garden is a Liberty. And last year I got two apples off it and they were the best apples I've ever eaten in my life. They were so good and so crunchy. I really would love to figure out a way. I, I think it's a pollination issue. Um, I think I just don't have the right pollinators, even though the crab apples are supposed to serve as a pollinator for that. Um, and you know how this works. Uh, even if things are self-pollinating, it helps to have a, part, a pollination partner there to really up the ante there. And we have lots of bees, so maybe it's something else that I'm doing. In any case, more fruit trees are on the agenda. One of the perennials that I'm going to be adding more of this year is Astrantia. Now, this is a perennial I didn't really know until I saw it at Northwind Perennial Farm, which is Roy Diblick's nursery. Um, down near the uh, Illinois border. It's just so, it was, it caught my eye and it was absolutely covered in pollinators. Now last year I ordered a couple of them. I had a hard time finding it. Ordered a couple of them uh, and added those to the garden. I really like those. And this year I've ordered another, I think I've got another six coming. I like it because it's kind of a part shade thing. Um, I think it'll go push into sun for sure. But honestly, I'm looking for more things that can do that part shade because that's the situation that I find myself in. Really looking for some different things to grow in that situation. I've already talked about another perennial that I'll be adding to the garden this year. And I did that in the video where I was sort of working through a design problem regarding the new path. And that is a still be dark side of the moon. That's a new introduction this year, although it was out uh, in some nurseries last year. Nice dark foliage. Um, I believe the flowers sort of start out pink, the buds are pink, and then they turn purple or something like that. Honestly, it's the foliage that I'm most interested in. Um, and I'll be adding a fair bit of that to the garden as long as I can find a moist spot for it. That's the thing with the still bee. Um, they can handle a lot of conditions, but they need some moisture. So I always love to experiment growing new and different plants. And this year I'm growing something called a Brazilian fern tree. Um, it's something I heard mentioned on a webinar I was uh, watching uh, and they actually talked about how quickly it grows and I thought well that might be a really cool container plant. So I ordered seeds for it and I've actually started the seeds. It is a full-on experiment. I, have, I never even heard of this plant until I was in that talk. I certainly have no idea how to grow the seeds other than what I've researched uh, and this is one of those seeds. These seeds are so hard you wonder how could anything possibly come out of this. Um, so I have started those seeds and it looks promising. I got five seeds. I started two of them because I don't really need or have room for probably more than one of these things if it actually works. Uh, but I wanted to save a couple of seeds to experiment with in case this round doesn't work. Another sort of experiment uh, is that I'm also growing Acerina, uh, which is a fabulous vine that I grew last year. I have an affinity for uh, annual vines I love trying them out and experimenting with them. And I grew Acerina last year, uh, both in my window box and in a shady planter kind of by the garage. And while it bloomed more in the window box, it did pretty darn good in that shady container too. Now last year I bought plants and I've actually ordered a couple of plants in a different color. 
uh, as well. But I thought I'd give it a shot growing it from seed to just see, see what happened. So I've also started those and I do have germination on those, but they have just germinated. They're tiny little things. So we're going to give that a shot. I bought a blue color for that one. Um, just to give it, I mean, a seed packet is, is nothing. If I can make that go, that's one of those vines that I could tuck in almost anywhere and find a use for. Uh, so I'll worry about exactly where it's going to go after we find out if it's going to go. One of the plants that I think is going to make a big splash is Colocasia Royal Hawaiian Waikiki. This Colocasia, it looks amazing. I haven't seen it in person. Looks amazing. I first saw this plant uh, in... Um, I think it was actually like a YouTube video about a trade show where it was it won some awards at a trade show. Um, and then now uh, All America Selections has selected, has given it an award this year. And I have two, I think two or maybe three coming. So I've got big plans for those uh, in at least two containers. I think you guys are going to love this plant. And I personally can't wait to see it and see how it does. It is super fun. Now, one of the things I'll be working on this year is the garden um, out by the road, uh, which I planted in 2020 and had a good 2021 um, and not a great 2022 uh, because I got busy with other projects. So I have to redo a few things at the end of that and rethink a little bit of that. And one of the plants that I'm going to be adding to that that is new to me that I'm pretty excited about is uh, Parthenia integrifolia, which is wild quinine, uh, which is beautiful. Now, I actually saw this in one of Roy Divlick's videos, and it just looks super interesting to me. Uh, this is definitely sort of a more, you know, it's a native, and it certainly has that native look. It's not a super cultivated plant, uh, but it's a white flower on it, uh, and it's supposed to, like, last for a really long time. So, that's one that I'm going to be trying out for the first time. I, I don't know a lot about the plant, but I'm looking forward to adding that one to the garden over there. And then the last thing that I'm going to grow this year that is new to me uh, is a climbing zucchini. This was a pack of seeds that was sent to me by Renee's Garden Seeds. Uh, they always do a really nice media kit for garden writers. And uh, usually there's a seed special seed packet attached to it. And this is meant for um, small space gardens. Um, the, Renee's Garden Seeds does a really good job looking for really good container grown varieties or varieties that people can grow in small spaces. And I mean, you know, the thing with the zucchini is that it takes up so much room in your garden. Now, I don't have a small space garden, but I'd love to use some of that room for something else. So we are going to try a climbing zucchini this year, and I am looking forward to seeing how that goes. So I will start those seeds. You don't need to start those very early at all. They, they grow pretty quick. And with zucchini, you don't really want to plant those out until the soil is pretty warm anyway. So I got plenty of time before I have to think about that. Okay, I've moved location so I can talk to you about some of the plants I'm not going to grow this year, and some of them are right behind me. Uh, the roses are going, you guys. Behind me are my David Austin Onwick roses, and they've been growing in this part of the Circle Garden, which you can't really tell it's a Circle Garden because it's covered in snow right now, uh, for four or five years. And uh, I love them when they bloom, but they don't bloom super well for me. They deal with soft fly larvae, then the Japanese beetles come. And uh, usually I protect them in winter. I didn't this year and I think that was fine. We really didn't have a harsh winter so I don't think that was a problem. All of that just adds up to a lot of work for what I don't feel is a great return on my investment. Now I will tell you this, I'm not getting rid of all my roses. I still have one David Austin climbing rose. Elsewhere in the garden I've got some landscape type roses. I've got a climbing rose um, along the front of the house, and I got some new climbing roses. I got two new climbing roses uh, sent to me by, from Proven Winners last year to trial, and I'm going to keep those. Those did great last year, so I'm going to keep those going. But these specific ones here, they're just not doing the work I want them to do here. So they are going to get the hook. I will rehome them somewhere. Someone wants them, I'm sure. This is not forever. I swore off roses. Well, I, actually, these were the roses that I got after I stopped swearing off roses the last time I swore off roses. I go through these phases of hating roses because they don't do great for me. Um, and why don't they do great for me? Ah, it's probably because I'm not willing to put in the work to make them great. I don't fertilize nearly as much as I probably should. Um, I had one comment once uh, when I complained about how my roses were performing last year in which somebody 
said it was because of my crap soil. And I deal with a lot of comments from people and I don't think twice about it. I just assume people are having a bad day so they're taking it out on me. So you can come after me and say most things about me. You do not get to call my soil crap because I have worked long and hard on this soil which wasn't so bad to begin with but I put a lot of work into my soil and that really peeved me off. So it's not because of my crap soil. My soil's great here. Um, there's no reason that's that. I don't know it's just I think I just don't I'm just off them right now. They'll come back to me at some point. I'm sure you'll hear me at some point telling you all about the great new roses that I bought but for now I'm moving away from at least these roses. Now I'd love to show you the next thing that I'm not going to grow any more of but you can't because you can't see it and that's kind of part of the problem. So the next thing now I'm not going to get again I'm not digging anything out here I'm just not going to add any more of these and I've just sort of soured on these and that is the hardy hibiscus. Um, the problem with them for me is that because our springs are so long and so cold here so to be clear, our last frost date, or what I use as a last frost date, is usually around May 10th. Uh, and that's not unusual for like a zone 5 garden. But what happens is that um, while we may not have frost, what we do have is extended periods of cold. And that's all because of my proximity to Lake Michigan, which doesn't warm up until like July. So my temperature here at that time of the year is dictated by the lake that I'm right next to, which means that it's not really warm here until, I mean, I don't plant tomatoes or dahlias out until the first week of June. May is cold here. So what is already a very slow to emerge plant, which is a uh, hardy hibiscus, super slow to emerge, probably the last thing that's gonna come up in anyone's garden. It's even later for me. Now in terms of bloom time, mine was a full month later than most people's in a similar zone last year. So that meant that I was seeing flowers in, you know, what was it? I did a video on it, mid-August maybe? Uh, maybe it was, you know, it might have even been later than that. In any case, it's just too late for me. I need my garden plants. I expect my plants to perform for more than just a few weeks late in the season couple that with the fact that the Japanese beetles also tend to go after those not not super badly in my garden but they will do some damage and soft fly larvae can also be a problem on those as well although I've not had that issue I'm just it's just not a plant I'm going to invest anymore in at this time another thing I'm not growing this year uh, which I'm a little sad about actually is ginger and turmeric and that's strictly because I just didn't get around to doing anything about it. Now, uh, if you've grown turmeric or ginger, you know that it's one of these things that you, you got in a cold climate, that is. You have to be on top of this. So if you're gonna start from seed, that's like in January here that I would need to start that. Last year, I actually bought plants from Jung Seed and that worked pretty well, but I never even ordered any of those. I didn't plan that. We're just gonna skip a year of that. I love growing those plants. I think the turmeric I grow more for ornamental purposes because it's really pretty. The ginger I eat some of, but I still have some in the freezer that I haven't eaten yet from last year. I'm going to take that space to experiment with some other things in the vegetable garden this year. And if I really miss it, I'll come back to it next year. But it's not one that I'm writing off for any particular reason. It's just that I just didn't really get around to it. And the last thing that I'm very sad to say I'm not going to grow any more of is service berry. I think service berry is one of the most useful trees or shrubs. You can buy multi-stem ones that are kind of more like a shrub. Um, I think it's one of the most useful plants you can have. It's, it's great in all seasons. It gets beautiful white flowers on it. It gets berries on it. Most of them get some really nice fall color. Um, they're fabulous trees and plants. I have three of them. I have one that was the first tree we ever planted here. It was a gift from my mother-in-law, so it's very special to us. Um, it's not a fancy cultivar. In fact, I think this was before most of those really good cultivars were introduced. Um, and it's struggling badly. I have since then planted two more um, that I planted bare root. Those are really good trees. Now, one of those is struggling pretty badly. And what they're struggling with is cedar apple rust. So service berries uh, fall into the apple family. Um, clearly we've got uh, some junipers in the area. I mean, it, it doesn't have to even be that close. Um, it's one of these diseases that has two, that's the host plant and then it affects anything in that apple thing. 
I'm also dealing with that crab apples and my regular, regular apple, and we'll talk about how I'm going to handle that when the time's right. But um, in fact, I'm adding a lot of native trees and shrubs in a project I'll tell you about soon. And serviceberry sadly is not on the list, even though it's such a good fit for that project. Um, it just makes no sense to me um, to be bringing in a tree that has a known problem. And there is no way to effectively manage that here because as long as the host plants are around, you're gonna be fighting it all the time. Now you can spray th with things like fungicide, which is what I am gonna do for the crab apples. We can't really do that um, with an edible apple. So we'll have to figure out what we wanna do with that. But it's just one of those things and it makes me very sad that service berries are at least for the time being off my plantable list. Okay, if you've got any great plants that you either you're looking forward to growing this year or maybe something that you've just written off either because you're having issues with it or you've just, like me and roses, you've just sort of soured on it for the time being, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. All right, I hope you guys all have a great day in your garden, whether it be covered in snow or not. All right, see you soon. Bye-bye.